and we're talking to Ibrahim Zahidi from, from um, Iran this evening on our Portugal Club special, uh, which this evening is all about the Portugal Immigrant Network. And as I, I was just saying to everybody here, we've got John and Christina, we've got John or Joao de Nort, as well as Ibrahim joining us from the Algarve, as, as you can see there with his backdrop. Is it sometimes us foreigners, immigrants here in Portugal tend to stay within our silos and communities. So, Ibrahim, thank you so much for being here um, to represent Iran. Uh, be here, of course, in your own right, but also tell us a little bit about what it's like to be Iranian here in Portugal. Thank you for being with us. Well, thank you. And uh, I really take the opportunity. Well, uh, when, when you send a message that, well, you're trying to get the network, okay, of different nationalities, it was very nice to me that why not to join this network? Well, I can learn a lot, okay? So, well, I may teach a little, okay? But I can learn a lot, okay, from different people. That's amazing. Well, you know, uh, being an Iranian here, just to let you know that uh, uh, the number of the Iranians in Portugal, we don't have that many kind of Iranians, okay? That they may be in the United States. For well, United States, there are many Iranians. Uh, but we don't have that much here in Portugal. Well, we have uh, more in Germany or France or Italy uh, or Sweden, but not again in Portugal. Okay. Uh, Portugal actually has popped up uh, very well during the past, I can say, uh, let's say just before pandemic starts, okay, four years ago, five years ago. Uh, and then let's say it, well, everything uh, slowed down. And then, and then again, let's say it is getting more popular to Iranian. And uh, it is getting more popular to Iranian because, well, Iranians would like to go basically to Canada and Australia. But because of the new rules and regulation, the, uh, the expenses, okay, which has gone high there. So they prefer a second choice. So their second choice right now is Portugal. And, and that's quite amazing. It is nice. Well, the, the Iranian people who are here, uh, they're, they're really educated people. And uh, well, they, they come here on their wealth. Okay, so uh, this is the, uh, uh, let's say, the, the kind of the Iranian people who are here. But as an, as an Iranian in Portugal, I really love Portugal. I mm -hmm. feel I am at home, you know. Uh, they have the same kind of hospitality that we have. Okay, so ah, interesting. We, we used to be that much hospitable, okay, in Iran. And uh, we, we love the strangers, okay, as Portuguese people love the strangers as well. So uh, first of all, the, the number one thing which attracted me and my family to Portugal is the people. Yeah. Okay, they're, they're really, really nice. The second one, the amazing Portugal regarding the sceneries, the weather, it's awesome, awesome. And well, there, there are a lot of opportunities. Well, uh, I myself say that, well, right now, Portugal is the, gold, is the golden age of the United States probably 50 years ago or 60 years ago. Uh, there are a lot of opportunities, okay? So you can grow very well here. Uh, this has been about, we, uh, I used to be the managing director of the biggest company in Iran, the largest company called Marco Polo. And that Marco Polo, we, we used to send tours to basically uh, European countries. And then since we were doing very well, the European countries were inviting us, okay, to visit them on fan trips, okay. So uh, we have gone almost all over Europe, okay. We were trying to find some place to dwell, okay. So uh, I, I was in, the, in, in Lisbon a couple of times, uh, but uh, back in eight years ago, well, uh, I just came to Algarve for three nights. Well, you don't believe me. I fell in love with this land. It is really nice, really nice. That was enough, was it? Three nights yeah. was enough. To you don't believe me. After six months, I was here. <laughs> yeah, after six months. Well, you know, be, being a part of a big company, it is really difficult, okay, to get separated from them, all right? It is not difficult for me, okay, but it is difficult for them, okay? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, uh, you've got a lot of tasks, okay, that you have to just uh, give it over to somebody else, okay? And it would take lots of time, and they try not let you go, okay? Yeah. Because 
because a lot of things would happen. But you know, since uh, still I'm I'm with them, still we're working with each other. Okay, so uh, but uh, I try to tell them that I'm opening new doors for you. Don't uh, don't consider me as leaving here. Consider me as new door, new window to any other part of the world. Okay, that so, must be a great compliment to you, Abraham, as well. They didn't want to let you go, did they, basically? That, that was good. And then let's say you're here. We, we really love the place. Uh, as I said, number one, people. Number two, the weather. Number three, the food. Amazing. Yeah. Right. Okay. Now, when was this? When did you spend those? I mean, you're in this advantageous position of, of visiting a lot of European countries and capitals, presumably. Um, so you had, you had a lot to choose from. You had a lot of experience. You chose... Portugal. Then you fell in love with the Algarve. When was this exactly? It was eight years ago in summer. It was the summer of eight years ago. I think it was 2015 or 14. Yeah. And uh, well, uh, I, I just came from a, let's say a fam trip to Switzerland. And Switzerland was really beautiful, really beautiful, but expensive. Okay. Yep. And it is good for travel. Okay, well, I, I didn't find it good for living. All right. But here it is good for living. Yeah. It's really awesome. Okay. And you didn't come alone. Um, you came with your daughter, wife and daughter. And yeah. all of you, I mean, you're, you're in danger of uh, being in another part of the Portugal club. Um, a matter of interest here, which is our extraordinary expat uh, hall of fame. Um, in that eight years, I think all of you have, have started businesses, including your daughter. You've launched projects. So could you tell us about this, how it is the Zahidi family have come here to enjoy this wonderful place and are, are now making an, an impact with, with the enterprises that you've created as well? Right. Well, you know, uh, being an Iranian, well, uh, it, it is a different kind of world, you know. Uh, I mean... Uh, mentally, you're always engaged with your future, all right? So you're always thinking about creating a good future. So well, I can say that when you are in Iran, you never live at the moment, okay? Because you have to think about the future to see how you can survive, okay, from different, well, points of views, okay, and how to create a good future for your family. All right. So um, being that much pro and thinking about the future. So right now we have got the privilege right now that we are thinking about the future. Maybe we are thinking about 10 years later. Okay. Not now. All right. Mm. So, uh, so that's why that I say that Portugal is a land of opportunities. Okay. Yeah. For, for us at least. Well, when we came here, we, well, I started the Marco Polo of Portugal here. So we started uh, the same business of travel industry. Okay, well, getting packages, well, different kind of tours to Iranians, okay, who were coming to, to Europe, okay, not Portugal, okay, anywhere in Europe. And then let's say later on, I, I created the, uh, well, a company, not a company, okay, a startup, it is called Portugal Residency. Uh, well, you know, when we came here, you might have experienced it as well. When I came here, I didn't see a lot of information. So there were very few information. So when we came here, we were assuming a lot of things, okay, based on what we had on internet that would happen, okay, that everything 90% was correct, okay, assuming. But when we came here, we saw that, no, we were wrong. We were wrong for 50% of what we thought. 50 <laughs> yeah. percent okay so so uh, you know being let's say uh, uh, trying to do it on on your own way okay well trying not to be dependent on anybody all right well so put us in a way that search for all the information that that we want all right and then let's say rectify it confirm it if they're true or, or if they're not true and then we came to this idea that right now we have got a lot of information that we can help people okay, to come to Portugal. Mm -hmm. All right. So, and you know, the company that I was working with, uh, I mean, Marco Polo, uh, we, were, uh, we were very much experienced and professional in visas. Okay. So uh, we used to 
will have, let's say, thousands of visas, okay, every, every year, all right? So we knew who is getting the visa, who is not getting the visa. And if that person is not getting a visa, what do you have to do in order for him to get a visa, all yeah. right? So uh, that put us in a place to create Portugal residency, okay, to help Iranian people who would love to come to Portugal on different kind of uh, basis, okay? So whether they're coming on student, well, a D7, golden visa, or whatever, well, digital nomad visa, all of them. Yeah. Uh, and then let's say we are still working on that one. Well, it is getting very much, uh, I mean, I'm growing it right now. I'm, I'm trying to put AI in it, okay? So to, to have it more, t- more uh, let's say, advanced and specialized. And uh, the other thing, my daughter, actually, uh, it was really difficult for her to come to a country where she does not understand anything. So at at first, what we did, we we put her in the Nobel International School here in Algarve. It was quite good for her to practice her English, okay, well, to be more, well, native-like, okay, so... It was good for her. But after two years, we found that, that it, it was not what we were expecting. Okay. We were expecting her to learn Portuguese. Yeah. We were expecting her to, to get to know more Spanish. Okay. So, so what we did, we, well, we just talked to her that if you would like, we can take you out from here and then go to public school. And she was fine with it. She was fine, but she didn't know okay, what would happen. <laughs> oh, brave girl. Yeah, so she started the school at, uh, at Portimao School. It's a it's a very good school, Al- Alaysho. Mm-hmm. It's a very good school. And then, uh, well, she was forced, well, she passed all the courses, okay, we went for the first year, but we went to the, uh, to the dean and we told her that we would like her to repeat the course, okay, well, because of her, uh, her Portuguese. Uh, first, he said no, and this we, we insisted. Okay, so and then he said, okay, no problem. If you insist, that's fine. All right. So what, she, reason, what was this to embed her learning and to go deeper into the language? Is that the idea? Yes, the de- deeper into language. Yeah. All right. Because you know, for us, uh, for uh, I mean, to enter the university, well, the year eleven and the year twelve are the most important years. Okay, so year eleven. You have to put your exams, okay, in year 12, it is the exam and the national exam. So year 11 and year 12, it is, uh, it is making a 50%, and then the national exam is another 50%, and then it gives you the, your ranking, okay, whether you can go to the university or not. So this was very crucial for us, okay, that she could enter the university, and then, well, she tried it. She, she repeated the course. And then in the long run, uh, she was accepted at the university in the University of Algarve. Wow. She, she was accepted at the, uh, uh, it is engin- bioengineering. And then, but she is very much interested in medical. So uh, since I'm doing my PhD at the University of Algarve as well, so uh, I, I, knew, I knew different people there, all right? So right. I went to my dean and said, well, my dean is a Professor Eugenio. I said, Eugenio, my daughter is coming here. Do you know anybody in that faculty? And then he said, yes, go to that person. Tell him that like, I'm, I'm sending you there. So wow. we went there, we talked to him, okay, and he said, he said to, uh, to my daughter that, don't worry, come to the university. If you don't like this course, no worries at all. Come, okay? There are going to be more windows for you, all right? So she started bioengineering. And then one year later, there was an, an opportunity it happened, okay? So uh, there was a course in biomedical, okay, so that she could enter. And you know that if you do biomedical up to master, you can automatically go to medicine, medical. Okay, so so now she is on the right path. She is doing, let's say, biomedical, which is a which is a part of medical university. And after that one, she's going to continue the uh, medicine, and she she would love to be a doctor. So that is her destiny. And what an amazing young woman, and she's also yeah. started 
a, like a, a side project to help people learn Portuguese, I understand. Yes, well, you know, since uh, right now she knows a lot of Portuguese, so we just encourage her, why, why don't you start teaching Iranian people Portuguese? <laughs> yes. yes. So she started Portolingo. So port, <laughs> portolingo.pt, she, and, and she is very, uh, very curious about technology. So she, she just started, and then she said, Dad, Dad I need, a, let's say, a website. Okay, start it. Let's start a website. And then she is adding different kind of things to this website. Well, just two weeks ago, she created a magazine. Okay, well, <laughs> learning Portuguese through magazine. And yes. then I said, that, have you ever checked if such a kind of magazine exists? Well, a magazine which is teaching you Portuguese, well, Portuguese culture, but teaching you Portuguese, okay? It is basically for language learning, okay? But, I want that magazine. Put me down for a subscription. Yeah, that, that's great. I'll, I'll, I'll ask her. I'll ask her. <laughs> yeah, to send it to you. So she started that one. She, she, she has got, let's say, once in a week, she has got free classes for one hour. Uh, and then uh, she's got something about 70 participants, okay, in that free classes. And then, well, she, she's, she's busy right now with her classes. That, that's her part. And, you know, uh, the, the good thing is for my wife, well, you know, when, when you hear about Iran, you say that, oh, Iran, well, they don't allow you to do this. They don't allow you to do this. You have to wear a scarf. You have to do this. Okay, so a kind of limited, uh, let's say, country, well, you may think of, okay, but when you go inside, you see that, well, that is not that much limited, okay, there are a lot of publicities, okay, that they, they do not exist, okay, in Iran. Understood, okay. understood, yes, yes indeed. Uh, but, but, you know, there, there are some things that you cannot do, for, for example, dancing in the public, you cannot do it, all right, but, but my wife was, let's say, uh, a very big fan of dancing. So uh, when, when she came here, we were just thinking, what can she do? Then, well, you know, first first we went to, uh, I don't know if you have heard about Carveiro uh, Club, Carveiro Tennis Club. Carveiro I know Tennis the town, Club. and they have the most amazing ball, the black and white ball, the same town, right? Exactly, exactly. Yes, yes. Well, you know, the, 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 uh, the, this tennis club actually belongs to uh, let's say a gentleman from Dutch, okay, but right now it's a kind of club for foreigners, basically uh, maybe foreigners are going there for doing sport, so we went there, we joined, okay, well, to do the uh, exercise and those things, so uh, once she was talking to one of her uh, trainer that, well, she could dance, she could teach, through, let's say poetry, uh, Persian dance, okay, there, and then the Immediately uh, next week, they they invited her to start <laughs> teaching. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and that that was good. So she started from scratch. Then we saw that well, it can be a good opportunity to let's say start a kind of uh, a social media like Instagram. So uh, well, she started the Instagram. Right now, she has got. 175k followers no way yes what an extraordinary family you are I, I if i may can i pause you for a moment because it may be that joel de north sure. and that's sure. his, his name um and john and christina may have questions for you uh, you your amazing family your experience here as, as an iranian person the, the businesses you've created uh joel de north or john and christina do you have anything to ask of uh, ebrahim ebrahim well, I know earlier you had, Carl, you alluded to um, uh, a story of how he had come over to uh, Portugal in the first place that I, I wanted to hear more about that. Or oh, working with Marco Polo. Um, well, there was something about a container or something. Oh, no, that, that was a different conversation. That was a different uh, conversation. Oh, OK. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, hopefully somebody who we'll, we'll speak to um, on one of the Portugal Immigrant Network sessions for sure. Uh, but Ebrahim, you you were um, with Marco Polo, weren't you? That was your first introduction to, to yes. life yeah. here in Portugal and, 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 and your jumping off point, if you like. Um, any other questions from our P Portugal club members here? Yeah, I have a question. So how long did it take 
two questions, really. How long did it take you before you found like a new venture that you wanted to try? And then how long did it take your wife? So it happened relatively quickly once she identified the opportunity. But was it before COVID or after COVID? Like you've been here eight years. Yeah. Yeah, it, it was it was before COVID. Mm. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, when I was in Iran before coming here, I already set up my plans. Okay, that what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do there, and uh, well, you know, uh, even before coming to Portugal, since we uh, we were operating in Portugal as well, we were sending tours to Portugal, Spain, and France. Okay, so it it was a kind it was a combination of Portugal, Spain, France. Okay, three nights, three nights, three nights. All right. So we had our tour operator here. Well, uh, it was Top Atlantico. Uh, you might have heard about them. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so, so when I came here, I started with Top Atlantico. All right. So uh, I told them that I can grow your Middle East business. Okay. Since I know Middle East very well. So I started with them as their uh, Middle East business developer. All right. Mm -hmm. So getting the clients from basically Iran and the Middle East, like uh, Dubai, okay, and uh, Saudi Arabia. Because being in this, in the, well, the industry is not that big. Okay, well, it is big, okay, but when, you, uh, when you're just speaking to the, uh, to the people, there, there are not too many people, okay? There are mm -hmm. some specific people. For example, if you know a person who is doing the uh, let's say uh, promotion of South Korea in Dubai, it means that you know all the best travel agencies in Dubai. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we have we had very good friend in Dubai. Okay, so uh, they were promoting to uh, South Korea. They were promoting Thailand. Okay, in Dubai. So I got I got connected to, to all those best travel agencies. Okay, mm -hmm. in Dubai. Okay, and the area. So we were trying to sell packages to them. So that mm -hmm. was the starting point. And then another opportunity came. Well, uh, uh, well, you in the United States, well, you might have heard about our vacation center or uh, recently it has been changed into Arivia. And I've heard of Arivia, yeah. Oh yeah. I, I know someone who interviewed there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you know, the, this is a, a, actually, a, a, it is into cruise industry, okay, well, mm -hmm. basically into cruise industry, so uh, an opportunity came up, okay, so I joined Arabia as well, I'm still with Arabi Arabia, mm -hmm. uh, so it happened, it happened, well, Arabia happened just uh, something around one or two years after coming, uh, mm -hmm. but uh, Top Atlantico happened immediately, let's say, when I came here, because I had already set my plan with them. And then mm -hmm. let's say, the new ideas came later, okay? Mm -hmm. because we, we created experiences. And but right it, now- It, it kind of chimes in with what you were saying before about how you see being here as a golden opportunity. You know, the, the, the Portuguese dream, if you like. I think you alluded to the American dream, perhaps, of you know the, how, how life was in, in the United States at a certain time where foreigners would come and it would be the most amazing place to realize your dream. Is that the is that the analogy you're you're making that for you Portugal is that place? Uh, that that's exactly it is. Right. Okay. Well, uh, because well, you know, when you are coming from different places uh, with a with a lot of experience, okay, and when you see that uh, in in Portugal uh, we have a lot of things, okay, but experiences are different, okay, so. Yeah. My experiences was, was totally different from, let's say, here. Yes. So I could implement, I could use that experience, okay, well, to create a kind of new businesses, okay, that's, that it was not there, yeah. okay, but for a specific niche market, mm -hmm. all right? So uh, the good thing was that niche market. If I didn't have that niche market, I couldn't grow. Yes, mm -hmm. well, that yeah, totally understand that. And I, I'd love to, uh, in conclusion, perhaps, for the time being, because I would love to have you as our as our go to guy to to connect us with the Iranian community here in Portugal and help us understand and and connect more. Uh, I, I, in in conclusion, 
just for tonight's purposes of this conversation, um, what else should we know about the relationship between the um, the Iranian psyche, psychology, um, and experience, and the Portuguese? How can we better understand our, our Iranian brothers mm. and sisters coming to Portugal as fellow foreigners and immigrants and their experience here in Portugal? Uh, I didn't get your question exactly. What 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 are the what do we need to know about the Iranian community and their experience of Portugal? Um, because I think it's different, isn't it? As you, you know, in terms of the niche you mentioned, that comes from being a person with a certain set of life experiences. And I think so much of our life experience is about the culture we've come from. What can you tell us specifically about the the Iranian psyche mindset and how it is for Iranian people coming to Portugal? Well. Uh... For them, it, it's really a good, a good place. So, I mean, uh, being in Portugal, as I said, uh, the, the point is that when, when we are in, I mean, Iranian, we are in Portugal, we are connected to, uh, let's say, 28 countries, okay, that there are, well, yes. majority of us, okay, in Iran, we have got a lot of relatives, okay, in, in Europe, okay, so we can get connected to each other very well. Okay. So, uh, and the other point is that uh, uh, in comparison with some other countries like Canada, well, Portugal is much better for Iranian because it is closer, all right? And, uh, and the, the other point is about the weather, okay? So Iranian <laughs> people are really, let's say, conscious about the weather, what kind of weather they're going in, all right? Uh, however, well... Uh, the Iranian people are not coming here to work, all right? So you do not see that part of Iranian who are looking for a job okay, okay. in Portugal because, well, they don't get that much benefit here. So mm -hmm. they may go to some other places with uh, more professionality and they get paid better. Okay. And, and you know, I, I know a lot of Iranians, a lot of, let's say, Iranian Canadians and Iranian Americans Yes. Who would love to come to Portugal, okay, and live here. Uh, basically, those Iranians who have gone to Canada for, I can say, 30 years ago or the 35 years ago, uh, I had, let's say, uh, a close friend of mine who have got travel agencies there, so they're sending their tours here. They're, sending, they're saying, Abraham, when we came to Canada, uh, they gave us credit, we bought our houses, they gave us credit, we bought our cars, we bought everything, and then we were up to here into credit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And now, after 30 years, I'm clear with my credit. So, so I said that, well, I have to leave. Where do I have to go? Well, I go to Portugal for a living. So that's why. Very good. Excellent. Any, any other questions then from our Portugal clubbers here? I had two questions I, I wanted to ask. One, Ibrahim, um, you mentioned that the Iranian community in Portugal is fairly small, but I mean, what, what are we talking about? Several, I mean, several hundred? How, how large is the Iranian community? I believe you're going to have something around 1,500, okay. I believe. Okay. okay. Something around that. And my follow-up question was, how closely in touch with each other is that community? Did you get that, Ibrahim? Uh, how, 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 you were you were breaking. Oh, how closely are the are the are the Iranian community connected to each other here in Portugal? Mm -hmm. Of those fifteen hundred people. Well, uh, location wise, well, I think uh, they're not that much close. Okay, well, yeah. some might be here in Algarve. We don't have a lot of Iranians. Okay, basically they're located in Lisbon. Uh -huh. And uh, well, uh, regarding the relationship with each other, well, yes, as social. soon as we see each other somewhere, well, definitely, definitely we engage okay into communication with each other. Uh, as as soon as we hear somebody speaking in Farsi, well, hey, how are you? Oh, you're speaking Farsi. Salam, chaturi. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, those things start. Okay, so okay. Uh, yeah. Well, Could you say that again? Very well. When we meet somebody from the Iranian community, what was that phrase we might say? Well, you know, uh, first we say hello. Hello here means salam. Salam. Okay, well, uh, 
Salam, and then how are you, Chaturi? Salam, Chaturi. Salam, Chaturi. Thank you for that. That's very helpful. Uh, John and Christina, any, any more questions? Yeah, very you? good. You, you did it very well. <laughs> <laughs> no more questions. Well, it's been great to meet you, Abraham. John, do you, did you have anything? Awesome. Not at the moment, no, but I'm developing questions as we speak. So. <laughs> Okay. We, can, we can send them on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I hope we'll stay in touch. I hope we'll stay in touch, Ibrahim. Thank you so much for being here. Is there a final message you want to share with us tonight? Well, my message is thank you for for giving all the nationalities, everybody, okay, to be a part of this uh, community. Okay, well, you know, when, when you are out of your country, okay, so the nationality is no more important. So you, 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 you feel you're belonging to a community, okay? So no more nationality question, okay? So uh, thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity to be here, to let's say, to give experience and to have the experience. And uh, I would love to see you. Well, I would love to invite you, well, all of you <laughs> to come to Portugal, well, to come to Algarve, well, you're going to be our guest for a Persian food here in uh, in Algarve. Yep. And then let's say we yep. can go around. So uh, that is something that I can invite you here. And thank you. Thank you for uh, everything. We'll thank see you, you soon. You. That sounds thank great. <laughs> that sounds wonderful. Nice. Thank you so much. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much.